everyone, welcome back to the channel. I'm not that excited about this camera that I got in to unbox because it took about two weeks express mail for this camera, but this camera is still sold out online at b and and Adorama. So special thanks to Steve Beck from Roebuck, South Carolina. He was basically the only one online that had a brand new Nikon Z7 II uh, with the 24-70 f4 kit lens. He was going to return it to Best Buy, um, but I said uh, get it from him and I was really excited for this camera. So I wanted it to be shipped express mail, but because of COVID, everything uh, just slowed down. So let's get started with the unboxing. Really big box. I don't know how large this is. So I couldn't connect with my Sony A9 Mark II. Wow, really good packaging. Thanks, Steve. A lot of bubble wrap. Let's take this out. So like I was saying, I couldn't really connect with Sony. In the past, I tried a Sony A7 R2, the Sony A99 Mark II, the XLT, and the Sony A9 Mark II, which I just sold recently. And here it is. So I never tried Nikon mirrorless before. The last Nikon camera was the D850 that I got in Japan. And in the past, the SLRs that I tried was the D300S first, then the D700, D3S, D4, D4S, D800. Uh, the Nikon DF was my favorite Nikon camera. And yes, I wanted to go with the Z7 Mark II. Uh, here's warranty, one year limited warranty, because I felt that the focusing system, such as the eye autofocus user manual, was really good compared to the um, Z6 and Z7 Mark I. And just today, February 20, sorry, February 19, I'm actually unboxing this past midnight. They just released online a press release that they're going to be releasing the latest firmware soon for the Z6 Mark II and Z7 Mark II, which will further improve the eye autofocus and also um, it'll enable the cameras to have Blackmagic RAW support and also 4K60, I believe. Okay, so inside the box, right away on the right hand side, we have the Z7 Mark II strap. Right side, a whole bunch of stuff. It's really cool, it comes with the actual charger, USB-C. Oh, sorry, this, this is just a power, power block. And I believe with this connects straight to the camera so you can charge the camera overnight. And I believe with the new battery, the ENEL15C, you can actually power the camera uh, while using it. And it comes with the USB to USB-C cable. This is to hold the wires together. And the differences between, and here's the battery itself, the E and EL 15C. So the differences between the regular Z7, which I have here now, actually to do a comparison, and the Z7 Mark II, is the ergonomics is slightly larger for the grip. 
There's about two or three people online that say the grip is maybe two or three millimeters larger. So here's the EN EL15C battery. It's the latest one. It's black versus the older battery, the B version is gray or dark gray. And here's the charger. And this is, oh, I guess for you to connect to the charger itself, US plug. Also the Z7 II, oh, this is the lens hood for the 2470, put that back. The Z7 Mark II has dual car slots compared to the regular Nikon Z7. It has XQD, which is compatible with the CF Express and UHS-2 SD card. And just looking at the raw file sizes, the Z7 Mark II, you can change the raw file sizes from small, medium to large. The Sony A9 Mark II that I had, you cannot. The improvement for mechanical is only by one frame per second. So the Nikon Z7 Mark II has 10 frames per second versus the Z7, which is just nine. And I believe in the middle is the lens itself with the lens pouch. And this is considered the kit lens, the 24 to 70. And this is actually a good size. I was expecting this to be much larger. Nice. Does this have a lock on it? Oh, there you go. Oh, wow, it's like a lock. Interesting, never saw this before. Okay. And of course, the lens, like I said earlier, the camera itself. What else is in the box? I think that's it. Okay, so let me put this to the side. All right, here's the camera itself. Brand new. And it's a good thing that my friend let me try out. I can feel that there's a difference. Let me try out three cameras uh, when I was deciding which camera to try out next. The Lumix S1R, the Nikon Z7, the first version. And I compared it with the A9 Mark II and just feeling Nikon's ergonomics uh, to me, and I have this with the FTC adapter. To me, it felt really good. So just looking at the two cameras here, side by side, it's really hard to tell if the grip is larger on the Z7 Mark II. Slightly. And if you notice here, the battery door is much larger with the Z7 II. And I think that's why everyone says the grip feels a little bit better because of the larger battery door. And also when I was trying out the different cameras, I noticed that the IBIS and the Z7 was way better than the A9 Mark II's IBIS. I noticed that the IBIS in all the three cameras I was trying out, the Sony being the worst, it was a kind of a tie between the Lumix and the Nikon Z7, but the Nikon Z7 IBIS is um, pretty good and pretty stable. And just looking at the raw files online with two of these cameras, I think there might be a color difference with the regular Nikon Z7 and the Z7 Mark II. I noticed in Lightroom, you can choose different color profiles 
the Nikon Z7, it shows camera standard version 2 versus the Nikon Z7 Mark II, it was showing just camera standard. Uh, so I want to do some tests side by side just to see if that's identical, the colors that I'm getting and the image quality. But can't wait for the new firmware to come out. Everyone uh, is anticipating the eye autofocus to be way better than it is now. And I thought the eye autofocus now is really good. So it's pretty cool that I got this in time, February 20, uh, 2021. And the new firmware update should be coming in about a week and it's even going to further improve on the eye autofocus. And they're saying it's going to focus on the people uh, further distance away with your subject. It'll focus on the subject's eyes, kind of similar to what Sony does. And just curious to see how much more the um, autofocus can improve with uh, the Z7 Mark II. And I know. I don't know if this can film in 4K60 already or if you need the firmware update, but I'm gonna check it out. Compared to the Sony camera, I do like having cameras that have a top LCD screen. Uh, that is my preference. But I'm gonna see how I like this camera. I'm gonna see if I feel at home trying out this Nikon mirrorless camera. So the top four things that I would consider over the Sony bodies, number one is it has a top LCD screen. Uh, which I do prefer, like I said earlier. Two will be the ergonomics. Ergonomics were really, really good, in my opinion, better than the Sony ergonomics. The third will be the image quality, the colors from the Nikon Z bodies. Again, I'm gonna see if there's any color differences between the Mark I and Mark II, but downloading the raw files online and looking at the colors, they're very good um, when you load it up into Adobe Lightroom. And the fourth would be the IBIS. The IBIS is pretty good compared to uh, Sony. Uh, lens selection of the Z mount is limited. And speaking about lens selection, let's mount this. 24-70. It's Nikon, so uh, you gotta turn it clockwise to mount it. Take out the lens one. I'm really impressed by the size of this lens. Wow, feels really good in the 2470. Let's load up the uh, battery here. I don't know if there's any power, we'll see. Turn it on. Nope, gotta charge it. But it's interesting, there's a, like a lock here to lock it and then you turn it. Very interesting, never seen this before. Okay, I'm gonna take some shots uh, tomorrow when I wake up in the morning, some low light shots just to do a comparison and some shots outside compared with the regular Z7. And yeah, hopefully I can learn um, and yeah, hopefully I have a connection with this camera compared to the A9 Mark II. The Leica SL2S that I have, autofocus and video is really, really bad right now. I'm waiting for the firmware update on that. So I may just sell the Leica SL2S. I really need like a secondary camera that's good for photos and video. And my main camera that I like to just take with me, have fun, fun with, is the Leica M9P uh, with the Noctilux lens F1. Um, but this would be a really good camera for 4K video. Uh, I do prefer cameras with phase detect on focus versus the uh, Lumix S1R, which has a DFD, depth to defocus, uh, contrast detect. Um, so it's just really hard decision. Um, after Sony, the only other two brands that are really good in like autofocus and IBIS will be Canon and Nikon. And for the longest time, it's always been Sony versus Fujifilm. Uh, now, slowly, Canon and Nikon is coming back into the photography game with the new mirrorless cameras. And if anyone is thinking of kind of going back to Nikon, when he used to shoot Nikon DSLRs, I think the Z7 Mark II or the Z6 Mark II 
series would really pull people back in, most likely after the new firmware update. All right, uh, let's get some rest first because it's past midnight and I'll take some photos outside. All right, I have three examples to show you. First is the color differences between the Nikon Z7 and the Z7 Mark II shadow recovery and high ISO. But before we get into the computer, I noticed that compared to the Z7, the Z7 Mark II has more options on the screen when you choose your autofocus area. Uh, with the Z7, you could do it within menu, but I noticed with the Z7 Mark II, it's already there for you to choose. Okay, so Nikon Z7, as we can see, this is a raw file, unedited. I'm using the Tamron 35.4 for this shot. And what I like to do is, like I mentioned earlier, I usually set a color profile in Adobe Lightroom. And I notice that the Z7, it is version two. So camera standard version two we are choosing. We're going to go over to the Z7 Mark II and they don't have version two, they have camera standard. But when we compare both, in library, side by side, Z7 will be on the left hand side. They are pretty much identical in colors. So you don't need to worry about if you have a Z70 by Z7 Mark II and you have a, uh, the Z7 as backup uh, image uh, quality for colors, the colors are going to be identical. Okay, for the shadow recovery, Original Z7, I'm adjusting. Highlights, you can do a lot of highlight recovery. So we're just, we're just gonna make that negative 100. Exposure, extreme, case, plus five. Shadows, extreme, case, plus 100. So I do notice, and I don't know if you can see on your screen, but zooming into 100%, there's a lot of horizontal lines. And Nikon is said to have fixed this with the Z7 Mark II. So with the Z7 Mark II, uh, and I'm bo uh, both Z7 and Z7 Mark II, I'm using the same lens, a 24-70 S lens, and auto white balance, and all the settings are pretty much uh, the same. Highlights all the way down, exposure plus five, shadows plus 100. And as you can see with the Z7 Mark II, you don't get any of those horizontal lines. And if you compare both of them side by side, you will even notice, uh, let me make the Z7 on the left hand side. Okay, it's still processing. You will even notice that the Z7 Mark II in color looks a little bit better. Now this is like really extreme cases uh, where you're gonna really do some shadow recovery, um, but in my eyes, I don't know if it's a white balance, but shadow recovery is better on the Z7 Mark II. When you try to recover shadows on the regular Z7, it looks, uh, the colors are off and it doesn't look uh, natural. And these couch pillows are actually um, gray, uh, but we can always lower down the shadow recovery. Let's just do 60. Same thing with the Z7 Mark II, and again, go back to library, Z7 on the left hand side, and yeah, I can still see when I zoom in that the shadows are a little different, I can still see the um, horizontal lines, but again, extreme cases, you're going to notice this, but if you're just recovering some shadow detail, you're not going to notice this. So I hope this doesn't prevent you from buying a more affordable, affordable Nikon Z7. Next example is a high ISO and color profile ready for camera standard for Nikon Z7 Mark II, camera standard version two for Nikon Z7. And comparing both together, Z7 on the left hand side, High ISO 12800, they are both very clean. These are both raw files and to my eyes, I don't notice any difference. It doesn't seem like the Z7 Mark II is um, better. So I was wrong. I thought the colors were different with the Z7 Z7 Mark II, they're identical. 
The main advantage for the Z7 Mark II is a former update is coming out. It's going to further improve eye autofocus. Uh, if you're into videography, the Blackmagic Camera RAW is going to be there uh, when I was reading the press release. Also, the blackout times are known as are quicker, uh, meaning that less blackout times on the Z7 Mark II. I also noticed uh, from using it, the grip's slightly, just slightly larger, um, but in real world, when you have both, you, you won't really notice it when you're holding it, but um, I did notice it. And just like recovering the shadows and extreme recovery, you won't have the horizontal banding. Uh, so overall, the Z7 Mark II is kind of like back then in the DSLR terms, Nikon D4 to Nikon D4S, like that. Uh, it's just refined and uh, dual card slots, dual processors. I did check if the, if I do video, if it backs up to XQD and the SD, it does not. It only backs up video to one card, even though you set it for both cards to be back up, it doesn't do video to both cards like uh, Sony and Lumix um, brands. Uh, so just kind of disappointed uh, there, but uh, overall, it's just if you want a refined camera, uh, this may be the time for you to come back to Nikon mirrorless because uh, this camera, the Nikon Z7 Mark II, should have been the camera Nikon first released, but I guess they just wanted to put the Z7 out and to see, see how everyone's reactions um, about the regular Z7, then I guess improve and release the Z7 Mark II. But overall, I'm gonna see how good this uh, video camera is, especially in video autofocus. And I know image quality, I'm pretty sure I'm not gonna have any problems at all, but um, I'll just see um, how long I get to actually hold on to this. I do have the Leica SO2, it's really terrible in video. That's kind of the reason why I wanted just to get away from Sony. Never really had an attachment to Sony. And my two choices were pretty much uh, the Nikon Z7 Mark II and the Canon R5. I'm not really a Canon user. I've been, like I said, I've been using Nikon most of my photography life, so I kind of feel at home just using this. Um, but if you just want to save money, put the money into lenses, then of course Nikon Z7 is more affordable now. Um, but I just went for the Z7 Mark II because I do think dual card slots is important. And I do think um, if I ever need to recover extreme cases, the processing um, will help it. I don't, I don't have any horizontal lines. Thank you for watching uh, this episode of Guam Photography. I'm gonna do my best to try to get a model photo shoot with the new Nikon Z7 soon. Z7 Mark II soon. Bye.